And that is that Allah in the Quran, <coughs> He does not want an economy in which wealth would circulate only amongst the wealthy. كَيْ لَا يَكُونَ الدُّولَةَ بَيْنَ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدَ أُوزِ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ That Allah has established certain systems in order that wealth should not circulate only amongst the wealthy. If wealth circulates only amongst the wealthy, then the rich will remain permanently rich. And the poor will be imprisoned in permanent poverty. Is that so difficult to understand? The religion which has come from Allah is only one, one religion. That one religion came with Musa, Musa Moses. It came with Ibrahim, Abraham. It came with Jesus, Nabi, it came with Muhammad. It didn't come for the first time with Muhammad, no, it's one religion which came with all, all, all. And that one religion has zero tolerance for oppression. Yes, zero tolerance for oppression. So if you are in the one religion which has come from the Lord God, whether you are following Abraham or Moses or Jesus or Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon them, if you are in that one religion which has come from Allah, then you must have zero tolerance for oppression. And permanent poverty is oppression. When the poor are permanently poor, that is oppression. I hope the politicians in Trinidad and Tobago will spend a little time to listen to me now before they come to preach Islam to me, when they come hunting for votes for the Muslims in the next election. Listen, listen to me, please. So you know something about this religion of Islam. The one religion which came from the Lord God. It came to all all through history, one religion. It didn't come, it didn't come, it did not come to the world for the first time with Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him. No. And this one religion has zero tolerance for oppression. So whether you are Christian, whether you are Hindu, whether you are Jew, whether you are Buddhist, whether you are Muslim, whatever you are, provided that you have your beliefs in that one God, you will have zero tolerance for oppression. And when the poor are permanently poor, that is oppression. Why can't you understand that? They don't teach that at the Hugh Wooding Law School. And that was what Venezuela was. The United States of America and the Western world were in such total charge of Venezuela because Venezuela has enormous oil reserves and gold reserves and other things of, of value. So Venezuela was extremely important for them. No country in the whole of the Western Hemisphere other than Canada was more important for the United States than Venezuela. Yeah. And so they had their hands on Venezuela from day one. And their, pro their procedure, their strategy, the, the Western world's strategy, modern Western civilization, if you did not know, I'm sure you knew it already. I'm just reminding you. Their strategy is that the rich must rule the world and the rich must rule the poor. And then they will take the rich and keep them in their pockets and they'll be able to rule the world. Is that so difficult to understand? You get the rich to rule over the poor and then you get the rich in your pocket and you'll rule the world. Is that so difficult to understand? So that's what they did in Venezuela. All the oil wealth that was coming into Venezuela was going to the rich and to outside. And the poor were denied. They were living in permanent poverty until, until Hugo Chavez succeeded in taking control of the country. And then he decided this is unjust. The wealth of the country must also go to the poor. 
And that's what they've been doing ever since. And the millions of poor, permanently poor people in Venezuela, for the first time in their lives, they were able to get some economic sunshine. Why don't you remember that before you jump on this Juan Guaido wagon? We recognize Juan Guaido as president of Venezuela. Nonsense. Nonsense. Do you know what Juan Guaido would do when he takes control of Venezuela? It's back to, pay, to poverty. The wealth of the country will again go to the rich and to the outside. And the poor will once more be permanently poor. And you want our votes? Huh? Are you sick in your head? Can't you understand? What kind of a Muslim or Christian or Jew or Hindu you are? Then you cannot stand against oppression. You cannot stand for the sake of the oppressed. Well, let me tell you what is Islam. If the, if the Muslims around you don't know it, let me tell you what it is. I'm sorry that I have to get so agitated now, but I will not allow you to come and take my Muslim community. Let me give you a warning. This is Islam. It doesn't come from any Mawlana. It comes from the Lord God. It comes from the Quran. Allah has given to this community who follows Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him. Allah has given to us a mission. If you did not know it, let me tell it to you. The mission he has given to us is Amar bil ma'aruf wa nahi anil munkar. What does it mean? Let me tell you what it means. So when next election time come and you come to get my vote, let me tell you what it means. Amar bil ma'aruf wa nahi anil munkar means if it is right, stand up for it. And if it is wrong, it is unjust, it is oppressive, it is wicked, stand up against it, regardless of the price you have to pay. That is a Muslim. That is a believer in the one God. If you are a Christian, you are my brother, this is your mission as well. We invite you to come and join us. And it is wrong, it is unjust, it is oppressive that the poor should remain permanently poor. Yes, Chavez made mistakes. And Maduro made mistakes as well. How do, you, how do you ensure that the wealth of the country goes to all the people so that the poor do not remain permanently poor? How do you get wealth to circulate through the economy so that the rich don't remain permanently rich and the poor don't remain permanently poor? If the Islamic Republic of Pakistan don't know it, Nothing. They don't even know the, the, the uh, A to Z of the subject. The elementary of the subject, the Pakistani governments never know it. All through the history of Pakistan. How do you expect Venezuela to know it? Huh? Pakistan, from the day it was born to this day, is simply that same kind of economy. Where wealth circulates only amongst the wealthy. And the poor are permanently. Well, that's Pakistan from day one. Up to every single government of Pakistan has failed from the beginning up to this day. They don't know. So you can't expect Chavez and Maduro to know. Huh? I have tried to explain in previous lectures what they have to do in Venezuela in order to escape from the sword of inflation. That's the most dangerous weapon that the enemy has the inflation. Mm. And that is when they attack your money. And as the money falls in value, the prices will rise. And as the prices are rising, people will become poorer and poorer. The middle class will now become poor. That's what happened in Venezuela. So when the middle class became poor, they turned against Maduro. And then the rich are becoming poorer and they're becoming very angry. And the poor who are already poor are becoming poorer. So it's a recipe for disaster, and that is what has happened in Venezuela. 
what you have to do, but the scholars of Islam are ominously silent. I don't know what to do with them. I can warn them and warn them and warn them and warn them. They wouldn't listen to me. So what to do? Leave them and move ahead. That's right. Try to create a new generation of scholars of Islam who will have eyes with which to see and understand the world today. They cannot understand the world today. They defend the Islamic banking system, which is bogus and fraudulent, and they wouldn't listen to me. It's a waste of my time to sit down and talk to them. I could talk from now until Christmas. They will never accept whatever I have to say. So why bother with them? Listen to what they have to say and then move on. <laughs> Don't waste your time. The money which we are using now is bogus and fraudulent and haram. They don't know that. I have studied the subject. I know it and they would not listen to me. You have to mint gold and silver coins and bring them back into the market. Can Venezuela do that? But of course, Venezuela is a producer of gold. And silver is in abundant supply in Mexico. Silver is in abundant supply in Bolivia. Mexico and Bolivia support Venezuela. So why can't you mint gold and silver coins, put them in the market, and Venezuela's inflation is gone. They can't attack you anymore with inflation. Hmm? But I, I could talk to them. I don't know why they wouldn't listen to me. Probably they say, Sheikh, could you get one Muslim country to do that? And then we'll do it. I can't get any Muslim country to do that. And the second thing is, if you do not plant, you cannot reap. That's the law. If you want to reap, you have to plant. Everybody has to plant in order to reap. Only he is able to reap without planting. Who? The banks. The banks are able to reap without planting when they lend money on interest. <laughs> Why? Because they are reaping what we plant. They're living off our sweat like pimps. That's why Allah has prohibited riba. That's one of the reasons why he's prohibited riba. If you have lending money on interest in your economy, then the rich will rule over the poor. That's right. So you have to prohibit it. You cannot have state intervention in the economy to redistribute wealth. It failed in the Soviet Union. It failed in communism. It's failing in socialism as well. But Chavez didn't understand it. Maduro doesn't understand it. So that's why we have the mess in Venezuela. But that does not mean that we do not support the oppressed. And I have to now wind up on this session on Venezuela by reminding us that the religion of Islam stands with the oppressed in opposition to the oppressor. And in Venezuela, the masses, the millions of people who were permanently poor are still standing with Maduro because they know that if he goes and Juan Guaido takes over, they return to permanent poverty. So when the bloodshed starts in Venezuela, it's not going to be the kind of gunboat diplomacy you had before. You can't get regime change again that way. Let me tell that to you, Washington. If the bloodshed starts in Venezuela, it's going to be rivers of blood because the millions in Venezuela who support Maduro because Chavez and Maduro brought to them sunshine, economic sunshine that they never had before. They know that if these go, they're going back into the darkness of permanent poverty and they have nothing to lose if they die. So they're going to fight. That's right. They're going to fight. And they're going to be bloodshed flowing like a river in Venezuela if the bloodshed starts. I hope it does not start. And I hope those fools, excuse my language, those fools with a capital F in this country who are recognizing Guaido as the president of Venezuela 
and who is supporting the oppressor. Don't you dare come to a Muslim to ask for support, political support. We'll not. We'll turn you out.